Brr. It is chilly in the woods today. Much like the disappearance of my mustache, the extinction of the Neanderthals causes a lot of debate in archaeological and anthropological circles because everything seemed to be going so well for them and it happened so abruptly. 60,000 years ago, the Earth entered a warm but variable period and the Neanderthals used this to spread further than they ever had before from France in the west over to Siberia in the east. And yet by 37,000 years ago, they have disappeared completely from the archeological record. It's difficult to talk with any certainty about an event that happened so long ago, but there are three main suspects, the climate, a flaw within the Neanderthals themselves, and us, Homo sapiens. But first we've got to talk about the elephant in the room, Neanderthal and human interbreeding. Current evidence suggests interbreeding between us and Neanderthals occurred on three separate occasions. The main one where the majority of our shared DNA comes from occurred around 60,000 years ago, with two smaller events that have left very small genetic traces at 100,000 years, and more recently, after humans had entered Europe. Despite this, I still think it's fair to talk about a Neanderthal extinction. Over 90% of our DNA comes from Homo sapiens that evolved in Africa, and the Neanderthal body type no longer exists. You can't find any modern human with this body type. They're just not around. So whether they're truly a different species or just a different morphology, the skinny-bodied, tall-brained Homo sapien must have conferred an evolutionary advantage, and the Neanderthal experiment came to an end. We don't know exactly what role Neanderthal DNA plays within us. Helpfully, it seems to have some role in our immune system, which presumably gives us some extra resistance to disease, otherwise it would have been selected against. Rather unhelpfully, it gives us an increased chance of type 2 diabetes. This is probably some sort of mechanism that helped Neanderthals cope with uh, starvation and hardship, but in the modern 20 first century when I can go to McDonald's three times a day, although I never do, just saying. It's not really helpful, it really increases our chances of diabetes, but it does bring me to the first suspect, climate. As I said earlier, the climate about 60,000 years ago was roughly similar to the climate we have now, but it was very variable, very changeable. Cold snaps during this time could last as long as 1,000 years. Variable climates naturally can cause stress on populations. Most large animals survived these periods of change, but some such as the straight-tusked elephant and Merck's rhinoceros did become extinct. Did these animals and Neanderthals share a habitat and face similar pressures? To further complicate the picture, 39,000 years ago, a volcano erupted in southern Italy in what is now the Bay of Pozzuoli. The ash from this eruption spread as far as Asia, and in many archaeological sites in Europe, the ash forms a dividing line between Neanderthal and human levels. If that wasn't bad enough, in the years that followed the eruption, large glaciers broke off from the Arctic ice sheet in what is known as a Heinrich event. This cooled global temperatures and was a tough time to be alive for sure. Was this the final nail in the coffin for a population under pressure? Any evidence of Neanderthals after this eruption is very controversial. Even if the climate was changing unpredictably and they had lost their preferred habitat, why didn't they just adapt? After all, that's what we would do. We've come to dominate every climate on the planet. Was there some flaw within the Neanderthals themselves that prevented them from adapting? Neanderthals matured quicker and died younger than we do. A 12-year-old Neanderthal recovered from La Moustère in France was as developed as a 16-year-old Homo sapien would be. We can also tell from remains that few Neanderthals lived beyond 40. Did these short lives leave less time for learning and passing on knowledge? Another problem is that Neanderthal's short but very stocky frame needed maybe double the amount of calories than a modern Homo sapien does. If their habitat was under threat, if their preferred prey were disappearing, this would be very difficult to maintain. As the climate got colder around 37,000 years ago, their preferred habitat of forest was disappearing, replaced by open grasslands. It's possible that the short Neanderthal frame that required a lot of food 
was less suited to this environment than Homo sapiens. Neanderthals seem to have adapted to stresses like these by reducing their population and retreating to core areas rather than adapting. We can see evidence of this in how little genetic diversity there was in Neanderthals. Much, much less than Homo sapiens. The toe of a Neanderthal woman found in the famous Denisova cave in Russia was really inbred indeed. Her parents were so closely related that they may have been half brother and sister. From archaeological sites in Europe, we can see evidence of the Neanderthal population contracting before the arrival of modern humans. Some areas were totally devoid of Neanderthal archaeology. In other areas, however, the picture's a lot more complicated. In France and Spain, Neanderthals and modern humans seem to overlap for several thousands of years. So what role did we play in the demise of Neanderthals? Homo sapiens arrived in Europe roughly 43,000 years ago and brought with them a brand new material culture with cool new stuff such as bone tools, really sophisticated art, sculpture, and music. This aurignation culture, similarly to Neanderthals, preferred forested environments rather than open steppe. Did they outcompete Neanderthals for the same resources? Did small numbers of Neanderthals join these groups and breed with them? Hard to say, the population was so low, around one person per 100 square kilometers, that they may have had very little interaction. Some 6,000 years after this though, the last evidence of Neanderthals disappears with the arrival of a new group of humans we call the Gravettian culture. These people were experts at adapting to the increasingly cold climate, they ate a lot of fish, they expanded along coastal routes and along the migration routes of herd animals, they made nets to hunt small mammals such as rabbits. They were not only able to survive the cold weather, but thrive. Was this the final blow for Neanderthals, Homo sapiens expanding at a time when they were most vulnerable? Again, hard to say. Certainly if the Neanderthals were not already extinct by this point, then the population would have been very small by the time the Gravettian emerged. In reality, all three factors probably played their part in the demise of Neanderthals. The climate changed, forced them into core areas, which left a, a gap in the market for some crafty modern Gravettian humans to exploit. And the Neanderthals just couldn't bounce back. Some probably joined human groups, others just died out. That's it for my Neanderthal series for the time being. I've got lots of topics about the Stone Age and prehistory to come. This has been by far the most popular thing I've ever made, so I really appreciate you all watching. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cold, so I'm gonna go. But watch another video, you know, they'll be flying on the screen right now. So you can click on one of them or the button to subscribe. And uh, yeah. I'll stop talking and just let you go about your day. See you.